So you want to make a top-down game in Godot? Maybe a 2D Zelda-like or something similar? One of the first things you start to work on is the player. But how can we make it move? In this video, I will show you how you can add top-down movement to your player using c -sharp. If you prefer working with GDescript, then I already have a similar video in my Action RPG series. You can find a link to it in the description for this video. And now let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, I've already created a world scene and a player scene for the project. The player scene has a character body to denote as the root. And other than that, it just has a sprite 2D for now. I've also added an instance of the player scene to the world scene. And I've set the viewport and window override in the project settings. And also the stretch properties, so it all fits a Zelda-like pixel art game. If you need help doing any of this, then you can go watch the first episode of my Action RPG series. This basic setup works the same no matter what language you'll be using for coding later on. Oh, and if you need help setting up Godot to use c -sharp with Visual Code, then I also have a video for this. Again, there are links to it all in the description to this video. So this is what our world scene looks like now. I've moved the player into the middle of the screen. And now we want to move it around. First, we add a script to the root node of the player scene. Here we must remember to select c -sharp as the language and select where we want to store the file. I'm just placing it in the player folder I created when I made the scene. Okay, so if you have everything set up to use Visual Code like I have, then the new script should now automatically open in Visual Code. What we want to do in this script is to change the player's velocity and then use this to move it using the move and slide function at the end. To do this, we first need a private class variable for the player's current velocity. This should be a vector2. And then we need to override the Godot physics process function. This is where we'll be moving the player, so let's first call the Godot function move and slide. We could also use the move and collide function, but I prefer move and slide for a Zelda like game like this. I've left a link in the description to where in the Godot documentation you can read more about these functions. Okay, so the move and slide function moves a character body 2D using its velocity property. So this is what we want to update. But we don't update it directly right away. Instead, we'll be updating the current velocity variable we created before. And then we only update the character body's velocity to the value of the current velocity just before calling the move and slide function. So let's do that here. Now let's create a new private method for updating the current velocity based on the player's input. I'm calling my method handle input. In the new handle input method, we then first set the current velocity to the return value of the input.getVector method. This needs the names of the actions connected to the keys we want to move the player with. By default, you can use the UI left, UI right, UI up, and UI down actions. But if you want to add your own actions and bind keys to them, 
Then you can do this in the Godot editor by going to the project settings and then input map. The order in which you add the action names matter. If by the end of this video your player is moving in the wrong directions, then this could be the source of the problem. You can read more about the get vector method in the documentation. So let's call our handle input method from the beginning of the physics process method. Remember that setting the character body's velocity should be done after calling the method. Now, let's run the game and see what happens. So, our player is moving, but it's super slow. Let's change this by adding a speed to our player class. We can do this by adding a new private class variable called speed. And for this we can just use an integer. I'm setting this to 50 for now. And then in our handle input function we add a new line where we multiply the current velocity by the speed. Now, some people might want to multiply with delta here as well to make the movement frame rate independent. However, you really shouldn't be doing that if you're using the move and slide function to move your character body 2D. It's already included in how the function works. Let's test again and see what happens. The player should now be moving smoothly around the screen. It's easy enough to change the speed from the script. However, it can also be convenient to be able to change variables like this from the Godot editor. Luckily, this is super easy to add. All we have to do is add the export attribute just above the variable we want to make available in the editor. After running the project again, we can then go to the editor, select the root node of the player scene, and then change the speed variable for the class here. We can also go to the world scene and select the player instance here, and see that we can also change the speed for this specific instance right here. And just to make everything a bit more fun to look at here at the end, I've just magically added a tile map to add a bit of background for when the player moves. You can also use an animation player or an animated sprite to animate the player's movement. If you want a C-sharp tutorial on this, then please let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to suggest anything else you might want me to create a C-sharp tutorial on. If you encounter any problems with the tutorial, then you can join the Megatech Discord server. Here you can find help from other members of our friendly community. I also stop by once in a while and help out when I have time to do so. If you like this video and want to see more like this, then please like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that. That's it for now. Bye.